continuing our journey through West Virginia with a visit to the city of Clarksburg. Clarksburg is a city in Harris County, West Virginia, which is located in the north central region of the state. It was formed in 1785 and was named for General George Rogers Clark, who conducted many expeditions against the British and Indians during the Indian Wars and the American Revolution. In 1824, Thomas J. Jackson, a.k.a. Stonewall Jackson, was born in a house on the main street, just across from the courthouse. Stonewall Jackson's statue is located right in front of the courthouse, along with the immigrant statue showing the diverse makeup of the population in the area and honoring the immigrants that helped to build up the community. Before driving to Jackson's Mill, we decided to stop at Stonewall Coffee House. It's in the alleyway right by the courthouse. Jackson's Mill is listed on the National Register of Historical Places. It's a well-preserved early grist mill and is the boyhood home of Stonewall Jackson. Colonel Edward Jackson, a Revolutionary War figure, originally settled the mill on the West Fork River in the 19th century. After Edward's death, his son, Cummings Jackson, took over the mill. After his brother, Jonathan Jackson, died from typhoid fever in 1826, his widow struggled to provide for their two kids, Thomas and Laura. In 1830, she arranged the young Thomas and Laura to live with their uncle. Thomas lived here until leaving for West Point in 1842. This About 30 miles away from downtown Clarksburg is the town of Winston. The West Virginia Museum of American Glass is located here. The 
collection starts from the 19th century and goes all the way through to present time. It includes about 18,000 pieces of virtually every type of American glass. Be sure to check out the Lady Jane Glass Dollhouse. They have on display as well. get a better feel of the area, we met up with Tina, the local tourism director for the city. Let's ask her some questions. Um, um, so go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Sure. I'm Tina Yoke, and I'm the executive director of the Clarksburg Visitors Bureau. Uh -huh. So um, how long have you um, been living in this area? I've lived in this area for 53 years, wow. my whole life I've lived and here. And you were born and raised in this area, yes. right? Yes, born and raised in this area, probably just two miles away from here. Uh -huh. uh, and I lived in the same house for 50 years <laughs> wow. and recently moved out just out of the city limits. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know there are a lot of history in this um, area, right? Can you please tell me a bit more about it? Uh, there's a lot of history that I'm still learning about, uh -huh. but there is a lot of history about the Civil War. We have a lot of historic buildings. But then also the, what history I'm a little more familiar with is the history of um, immigrants coming to West Virginia mm -hmm. to work in the coal mines or to work in the glass factories. In fact, my grandfather came from Spain wow. um, over you know to our area. He was just a child then, but he did end up working in, in the glass factory and... and mm -hmm. um, so there is a lot of people who came to West Virginia to work. So like for um, visitors, um, are there any places you would uh, recommend them to see? Uh, we're actually getting in the process of publishing a walking tour map. There are mm -hmm. plenty of historical houses and buildings just within walking distance of downtown Clarksburg. Uh -huh. um, so. Uh, I don't have a lot of them, you know, memorized, but there there are definitely places within walking distance for historical tours. Okay, so um, I know um, the Confederate General Stonewall Jackson is from here, yes. and what are the uh, what do local people feel about you him? You know, whether you liked him or didn't like him, it is a strong part of our history. Exactly, and I do know that people travel, you know, from all over parts of the United States to come and see his birthplace and in his history. Um, yeah. So this, like, are there any local uh, cuisine from this area? Like, uh -oh. what do people like to, you know, eat? Yeah, so really good Italian food. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, we have our share of different Italian restaurants. And I, you know, some of the foods that we have here aren't popular in other parts. And some people haven't even heard of them, like the pepperoni roll. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it started when the coal miners went to work they needed something to eat so they would take some Italian bread and they'd take pepperoni mm -hmm. um, and have the pepperoni rolls and we are actually very fortunate to have th at least three um, places right here in Clarksburg that make delicious pepperoni rolls. Wow. Um, since you mentioned the coal miners and such so are there any like um, coal miner factories where visitors can go and um, 
check it out? Or? No, there's not, <laughs> but we actually have a history museum, and I'll give you the information. It's just down the street, uh -huh. uh, so it has information about the different coal mines and then just the strong history that's here in, in the Clarksburg area. Okay. You could sp spend hours actually touring our Clarksburg History Museum. Uh huh. So what um what's the local people like in this area? Like very friendly. <laughs> uh, uh huh. They look out for one of n another. I think that you know when you walk down the street, people will stop and talk to strangers. Uh, we welcome outsiders. We welcome visitors. Um, we like to hear the stories from other people, and we certainly like to tell our stories to visitors. Yeah. That's my friend over there. <laughs> I have, he, he'll nice. stand there and wave and tell. I see. Wow. His name is Nate, and everybody in Clarksburg knows Nate. So are there like um, restaurants around this area you would recommend personally? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. What are those restaurants? Um, if you, so for Italian food, there uh -huh. is Menards, there's the Caboose, there's Julio's Cafe uh -huh. in Glen Elk. Um, Heart Kitchen Eatery is a fine dining establishment here in downtown. Uh -huh. My mother's daughter, which is just across the street, oh, I've never wow. had a bad meal from there. Uh, we also have a wonderful, cozy coffee shop just across on the other side of that building called Stonewall Coffee. Uh huh. So Interesting name. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> we have a lot of things named after that. So. <laughs> yeah. Are there um, any like state parks around here to say? Yeah, we have it's in Harrison County. It's called uh -huh. Watersmiths Park, That's and it has some great hiking trails and biking trails. Uh huh. Uh, so we're fortunate to have one right here in Harrison County, but then there are also. Uh, several within a one hour to two hour of driving distance. Well, like most okay. people, whenever they um, think or hear of West Virginia, they they always um, know, you know, John Danvers song on yes. time West Virginia. <laughs> Wherever right? you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. I, um, I feel like there there's so much more into West Virginia, you know, like what, what are the things that people should know about West Virginia? There is so much more, exactly. You know, we're, we're very well-educated people. Uh -huh. uh, we have plenty of job opportunities. Our tourism industry has just really expanded. So, like, in the winter, you know, since right now we're in the winter season, like, are there um, places to ski nearby? Yes, yes. Yeah. We have Canaan Valley, we have Timberland. Timberline, and that's only again like two hours away from here. Uh -huh. uh, and then in those towns where those ski resorts are, there's real cute shops uh -huh. and restaurants and places to go to hear live music um, and have some craft beer or some I homemade ice cream. Uh, so there's plenty to do even while you're skiing. You can you know go into the community and and have plenty of activities. Mm -hmm. And yes. I know like um, in this state, like um, you can go out and shoot a deer, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I yes. heard. <laughs> yeah, you know, for like for me, um, for example, like most Chinese people, they can't really shoot um, a deer in China. Yeah. Or, you know. Are there many? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. that may be, yeah, that's interesting. So are there, um, you know, any like um, places to shoot deer around here or? Um, there are certain places that you can hunt uh -huh. and you have to have a license. Oh, okay. And there's only certain times. So there's only certain place you, places you can okay. and you have to have a license and there's only certain times that you can. And okay. then there's times when you can with a gun uh, and then times when you can with a bow and arrow. Okay, but you can go with um, others, right? If you don't have a license, you can go and uh, still have the experience with um, others if they go. Uh, um, I, but I would recommend, you know, <laughs> for safety too, to get your license and to go through the training, uh, you know, the hunter safety training that uh -huh. they offer. So uh -huh. that that is the big thing here in West Virginia, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's really a good thing that there is hunt, uh, deer season because we do have a very large population. Uh -huh. So be careful when you drive because they they can run out into the road into your vehicles and such. So uh -huh. it is good to help thin out the population, and then it also provides a pretty healthy source of of food uh -huh. <laughs> for people too. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So like um. 
I know you mentioned that you haven't seen much of uh, international visitors here, right? Right. right. Like, uh, is there anything you want to say, like, to you know, international visitors? That like, we welcome you. <laughs> <laughs> we would love. We would love international visitors to come. Uh-huh. We'd love them to come to West Virginia. We'd love them to come home to Clarksburg. Uh, there's a lot here, and I do think we might get a bad rap as far as you know what there is to do, uh-huh. uh, but we do welcome people from all over to come. <laughs> Sounds good. Not far from the Glass Museum is the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. This will be our final stop. It was in operation from 1864 to 1994. It was made in Gothic revival and Tudor revival style by the architect Richard Snowden Andrews. Construction lasted from 1858 to 1881. It was originally designed to hold 250 people, but become overcrowded by the 1950s with 2,400 patients. It was closed in 1994 due to the changes in laws governing mental patient treatment. I can imagine the caged souls yelling in the chill night and crawling through the sick walls. I can't help but shiver, thinking of even one night in this dark prison of souls. I left with many feelings. No matter if you love the architecture or are scared to death of it, like the song by Kansas says, all we do crumbles to the ground. Though we refused to say, we didn't say anything too strange while visiting the asylum. But as we sat down on the bench, we saw the light flap on and off for hours into the night. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.